a regular Tuesday spot or yeah. whatever that is. So it has been important in helping spread the word, would you guys say, but it's not so much the imaginary thing that people think that you guys are just tweeting and then all of a sudden people come running down the street chasing after you or something. But it's interesting, in different cities it's different. Like yeah. in D.C. there's this weird law where right. you have to have a line waiting for yeah, you, I you think. you have to have a queue, actually, you in have order to, to pull over. Right, so that's it's great. So Twitter's great. <coughs> Tweet, get in line so I can pull over and park and serve you food. Right, so they legally can't pull over unless there's a queue in Washington, D.C. So trucks like Fogel Brothers of Merlindia or Salka, they have to kind of send out a tweet and say, hey guys, we're in this neighborhood, do you want us to stop? And somebody will bring out, you know, 10 people from their business park and they'll all be standing there and they'll respond back and say, yep, we're all standing here waiting for you. And then the truck is allowed to pull up. It's an old school ice cream truck law. And when I spoke to the, um, the governing body that, that oversees permits there, they said they don't really have any any plans of changing it because they have a lot of traffic flow, they have a lot of security for politicians, and there's just all kinds of, I think it's all just, they don't want to mess with it. <laughs> yeah, really. Also in New York City, it varies so much by community board and by precinct. It, you know, yeah. it's, it's yeah. absurd. Uh, around here, it's really, they're, they're great. You know, I, I'm on a corner and one day I worried that, when I first parked there, I worried, can fire trucks get around me? And I, I stopped the guys and just said, I thought, God, they're going to throw me away. I'm really opening a can of worms. But they said, oh, don't worry about it, man. And now when they're going by with their sirens on, they wave. You know? <laughs> if I were in Midtown in a similar situation, in a similar place, the cops would, <laughs> would tow the truck away. So. Yeah. So I think if you guys want, we can kind of open up the floor if anybody has any specific questions for Kim or for Thiru or for Doug if you, or for me, if you guys have any questions you'd like to ask. We're just making it a little bit informal, so feel free just to kind of jump up. Yeah, sure. Everybody is welcome to sign. I would hope that they sign the book because without them I wouldn't have a book. So, yeah, I, I mean, they're really the ones that do all of the hard work. And my job, comparatively, of eating all their food was pretty fun and easy, actually. So, yeah. Oh. Hi, um, a couple of questions. How long did it take you, like, start, like, conception to actually getting in the truck and running the truck? And then what are, like, the, the worst parts of owning a food truck? Do you want to use that little mic, Kim, maybe? Oh, sure. Just make sure everybody can hear you. Oh. Or is it tied down? I think it's tied down. Uh -oh. Just take this out. Oh, there you go. Wait, it's over? Yeah, okay. Um, for me, I guess it was about two and a half years. <clears throat> two and a half years before I could start. And um, and I was just so determined, and and I was very happy when I actually got on the street. So, And it'll be four years in June that I've been on the street. So I've been working on this for about six and a half years, I guess. Um, I, I think the hardest part is that you can't totally ha get settled into a routine because you don't know what's going to be happening on the street and there's just yeah. you have to be really aware so there's a certain level of performance energy you need because you just don't know what's going to be happening so anytime I go into an office I have these other fantasies about like oh when you're in an office no one's going to come in and take your desk and move it to the other end of the hall and tell you you can't be there until three hours later or something <laughs> I don't know but I mean I just think that it, it I feel like in my mind, I compare it to what it must be like to be an athlete during like game season. It just to me, it takes a certain amount of energy that I didn't have to have in other kinds of jobs. But um, but also, it's been an extraordinary adventure, and and I feel very grateful to be a part of the scene. For me, it took me three and a half years to set up. You know, I apply the license, all the paperwork and stuff. So once the place getting running, I start slowly get busier. So I keep myself very, very busy, active, like very fast. You can come and see the lunch line, how moves. My lines are, lunch lines are really, really long. People will willing to wait, so I'm pretty happy. I had to make everyone wish how they want the food. Every food I cook right in front of them, so make them happy, everyone leave from my card, you know? Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. um, I think we, we first, decided that we might do the truck in the very beginning of January 2009 and we were we opened on in the beginning of June 2009 so it, it took f five months or so but really a lot of the wait was just waiting on city bureaucracy to roll through uh, we could have started a month earlier if if uh, it didn't take 
two and a half months for the vending badge to come in the mail, you know, things like that. Um, and as far as the worst bit, uh, I think for me, the only real frustration is that to be on a soft serve ice cream truck, you're so dependent on the generator working okay and the ice cream machine working okay. And these things are just archaic pieces of crap and they don't work okay. So there are days, especially when it's you know 106 outside and the air conditioner is working and the generator is trying to freeze these two, there are two freezers in there, one for chocolate, one for vanilla, and the whole truck starts buckling because it's not kicking out enough energy and slop starts pouring through and you have to tell people, sorry you waited in line for 45 minutes sweating, but <laughs> the ice cream is just, Goo. Uh, so that's the one frustration. It would, it would to have like a state of the art ice cream truck with you know a, a reactor in back that can properly fire a couple of ice cream machines. That that'd be a fantasy. I'm <laughs> thinking about that. Did you have a question? Um, yeah. Um, how difficult was it for you to find the commissary, like a place for you to put your truck? And you <clears throat> was it tough? It's not easy. They're not. They're after. They're not as many as there should be. I think. So it, it's not easy. You have to park, the city makes you park in a, in a commissary, in a special place for food trucks. So you can't just go to any food lot. You can't just, I mean, you can't just go to any parking garage. Yeah. So um, I don't know. Is it kind of like trying to join a club? Like you're like, ooh, anyone have a membership open? I mean, I don't know. It's kind of hard to find. The rent is so high, too. The rents yeah. are high, too. Yeah, yeah, then rent can be high. But yeah. for me, it was just a matter of it's just hard. Like, and if you're not, a lot of people I know are not totally thrilled with their lots, but you can't exactly pick up and move because they're hard to find. Yeah, my, my truck my truck lives in uh, Hunts Point. So, I mean, I have to drive out there and jump over syringes and get the truck going and uh, <laughs> then drive it all the way down 2nd Avenue because you can't take it on highways. So, yeah, it's 2nd Avenue right now to Union Square. Oh, uh, so. The tr the, but to answer your question, the commissary came with the truck, you know. Yeah, it's all it's full of ice cream trucks, wall to wall. At night, they're packed in. You can't walk through it. All, it's yeah. <laughs> but someday, my fantasy would be that I'd get to buy a, a, a lot that was like officially a lot, and then I'd invite all of you to come, and then we'd have this little <laughs> truck, truck family together. We could clean all the trucks out and have great yeah. parties too. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I guess what was like what was your motivation as far as like you know from making it like a, like a like an idea like at what point did you realize like all right I have an idea for this truck and then like what what was like your motivation for actually doing it like I mean you, you have an idea at some point that okay I have an idea for a truck selling ice cream but like what was it that made you actually get out and do it like what got you going uh, to me it w uh the idea of doing something in the summer that was so far removed from playing the bassoon uh, was that was that was the incentive. And honestly, Brian and I just decided we were going to do the damn thing our way. And and if it was a colossal success, it would be uh, freakish but really fun. And if it was a colossal failure, it would be, just be a great story. And we just. Um, Every, every time another notion came along, we thought, well, to, to hell with it, let's just do it. Because if this summer passes, and it, it'll be the summer of the big gay ice cream truck for us, and we never, uh, it never occurred to us that by August would be written up in the New York Times, and it still makes me laugh my ass off. But we just did it because we loved it and wanted to have fun, and it stuck. Yeah. For me, I'm just keeping same cart, the lucky cart, so I didn't make it like a big truck. Because once I move somewhere else, maybe, but New York City, I want to keep it as small as possible, less trouble, you know. Like she said, like truck, then you have to have to get a special permit. Parking is difficult, like she said, like no standing anytime and stuff. So like one of those things you have to like look up? Like, I mean yeah, push card and truck is a <coughs> lot of different low, very different low. They both have a similar low and I have very different. What was it like, what was it like for you guys like, to get into yeah. the first time? Get oh, um, <laughs> to get started. To think back the <laughs> all the way back. Um, I, I, I think, I think, I think we both just. I think both of us just. It was such an adventure. Loved the idea that. Uh, there are similarities between Kim and I, just professionally too, because she uh, was a, a performance artist, really, and and I'm used to playing in front of crowds. And to both of us, it. I think it fulfilled this. Uh, this need to perform somehow, you know? I love dealing with people, and so when you're on the street, you really get to deal with people, and you are creating little scenes in a way, but yeah. also it's just, like, you, you affect 
someone's day, they affect my day. Someone comes up and we have a little exchange about anything, you know, we, and, and then they walk away and I think, well, I don't know if they realize this, but they, that, that meant is, that did a lot for my day too. You know what I mean? Like there's a, there's a lot that goes on when you go up. I feel like I'm in a performance piece or an installation really, like the install, the tri <laughs> screw truck is an installation and people are looking in at me and I'm, I could either be in a, a ditch or it could be at the, the Whitney. It's this weird, we're all <laughs> looking at each other and interacting, but. Yeah. Also, I love small businesses. I'm just fascinated by all small businesses, and these trucks are all small businesses for the most part, too. And there's something, I mean, I'm just overwhelmed by how much support people show for that, that they, they want you to do well. They People really want you to succeed, and, and it's so nice. And sometimes I think sometimes people will drop by and say, like, I'm just going to pay a dollar for a cookie, but I want to give you my dollar. And I feel like, do they really, I mean, sometimes they want a cookie, but sometimes I feel like they just want to give me some business. And I just think, that's a great dollar. You know, that's a really nice dollar. And when I travel to cities, I'm sure you experience this going all over. It's very touching to see all these businesses, Definitely. too. Yeah. I think that's kind of one of the reasons I wanted to do events like this, because I wanted to try to support, um, of course, uh, institutions like the Strand, and tomorrow I'll be at Powell's in Portland, and places that are independent and have that entrepreneurial spirit just like these guys do, and kind of team up with the people who the book is about, because I'd re much rather have that energy be conveyed to you guys so you understand really the drive behind this. The drive behind this is not to make some sort of profit off of a of flash in a pan trend or something. That's that's not my goal. I think it, the goal really is just to illustrate how passionate and creative and brilliant and wonderful all of these um, truck chefs and truck owners are and, and that they let me into their life for a little bit. It was really cool. So yeah, I just, I to reiterate what Kim said, it, it's really, you find people who can see through the the forest and they're not going to just run over to the Baja Fresh truck because they decided to open one now or whatever the deal because everybody's jumping on the train and wanting to do food trucks. And I think people can see that and they are going to support the best and the brightest of it and that's what hopefully I was able to try to capture in the book as well. Did anyone else have any questions? Oh, no. can you? oh. Sorry. Oh, he has the mic now. We'll go through. Yeah. Sorry, I guess this is a basic, very basic question, but where are your trucks located? Well, he's always in Washington Square Park with his car, right? In the same spot. Yeah. South side of the uh, Washington Square Park, West 4th Street and Sullivan Street, right in front of the NYU Law School. Kim moves, Kim moves around, so you need to look on her website. She sticks to a, we a website schedule. Yeah, I, I, but I... I uh Unless there's a special event, I have set spots that people know, oh, Tuesday, Thursday, I'm at 38th and 5th for lunch, I leave at 3.30, and then I go to the, you know, so it's all, but it's on the website, and some people don't even know if I have one, I think, but a lot of people look at the website, or they call the phone number. And, and I'm then, usually at Broadway at 17th, but, you know, it's a truck, so who knows what's going to be in your spot. Some, day there, some days there are flatbeds, so, yeah. you know, it's a little bit. So, can you? Hi. Hi. Um, if you had to uh, redo it all over again, is there anything you might do differently? The truck chefs yeah. or the book? Okay. <laughs> I'm like, oh, there are a couple of things. Yeah. No, I'm just teasing. Go ahead. I'll let you guys take this one. If you had to redo your trucks again, is there something, or your cart, is there oh. something you would do differently with the cart or the truck? Or do you feel like it's kind of an evolving thing? And yeah. You can no, do it? it's, I think it's sort of just a living organism. And, you know, you're not happy with every little bit of growth along the way, but it's, it's, you gotta let it live its own life. You push it and guide it. But no, I'm not unhappy with anything. I mean, it would be nice to go back to the first summer and have a chocolate machine that didn't blow up every you know, <laughs> couple of days. But eh, it's happened. There you go. Anything yeah, you right now, yeah. Right now, I'm doing want to do what I'm doing right now. So after the license expired, 2012 December, then I'm gonna decide if the city give more. Then I'll stay in the same place. If not, then I have to maybe see said like I have to move to Portland, Oregon, you know? <laughs> <laughs> because a lot of vegans already calling yes. me to come down there. <laughs> they give house, everything to live for there for me, yeah. <laughs> a lot of vegans, you know, they supporting me, so. Uh, right now I'm in New York. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> After 2012, December, you know? Yeah. 